insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 154 ranking magic kingdom rides i'm your host joseph whalen and my energetic and analytical co-host madison whalen hi everyone how you doing today maddie i'm doing all right how about you doing good and this week we have our special guest co-host with us michelle whalen from insights into entertainment uh she is our resident disney expert and uh will be offering valuable insights We'll go with that. How are you doing today, dear? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. So we, uh, that's the wrong camera angle. So we, uh, that's the back of Michelle Whalen's head. <laughs> the backside <laughs> of water. <laughs> uh, great leaving. So we are fresh back from our trip to Disney. Mm-hmm. And we decided, actually, it was going to be a ride home discussion during our 16-hour ride home. Right. Uh, where we were going to rank rides and experiences and we decided that let's turn it into a couple of podcasts it's it's worth a discussion so that's what today is so fresh from our week in disney and thanks to the creative thinking afforded by our 16-hour drive we decided to take a little departure from some of the hard-hitting topics we've been talking about for a little bit of fun we're going to take the next couple of episodes to dive into our reviews of some of the more popular rides and attractions in disney world on this week's episode of Insights into Teens, we're going to examine the Magic Kingdom. But before we do that, we do want to invite our listening and viewing audience to check out the podcast and subscribe. You can find us listed as Insights into Teens for audio only. You can also find audio and video versions of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. And we're available on Apple, Spotify, Google, anywhere you can get a podcast these days. We would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback. We're always looking for suggestions on show notes as well. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at twitter.com slash insights underscore things. Or you can get links to all those and more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. Are we ready? Sure. Okay, here we go. So the first uh, area that we're going to start out with, because you were kind enough, Madison, to break these down in the different areas for us, is Tomorrowland. So in Tomorrowland, we have a couple of different rides, most of which I haven't been on, so I don't, I don't see me speaking too much in this uh, segment. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you give us a rundown and give us your rating and, and feedback? All right, so the first one on our list is the Astro Orbiter, of which only me and Mommy ended up going on. So I suppose you and I can really just discuss our ratings on the ride. So, sure. Do you want to go first? Um, I would say mm, I'd give it a six. So our, our rating scale is? One to ten. Okay. Ten being the best. Absolutely. Okay. So... I guess it's probably worthwhile to kind of talk about how we're rating these. So what's the criteria for rating these? Uh, I guess for me, it's theming, um, uniqueness, um, wow factor, you know, because I don't need it to, you know, be uh, a fast spinning, you know, looping type thing. You know, there are some people that... That's what they look for in a ride. Right. You know, when they're going on like a roller coaster or, or something like that, they want to be jarred, you know, where, you know, I, I think I kind of, I look at multiple aspects of it. So for me, 
it's it's not a 10 it's you know it's not a five it's a little bit i gave it a six right you gave it a six um you know i wrote these down <laughs> probably should have um so giving it a six because it's a bit different than your typical carnival ride okay um and it has a magnificent view of the magic kingdom you know and especially if you go on it at, at night that's a, that's a very important so that's uh yeah. that's definitely a, a an important thing okay but so. you know it's a quick ride and that's unfortunate with a lot of the rides in disney is that certain rides are just very short sure and that's where it kind of gets dinged a little so, Maddie, what's your rating and what's your feedback? And, and what's your rating methodology? What are you looking for? Uh, for me, I'm also not really looking for the thrill of the ride. In a lot of cases, I kind of find it to be like, I really like the aesthetic of rides. I like to appreciate what the ride's doing because not every ride's trying to be a thrill ride. So I can appreciate just the general purpose of a ride, and I don't really do it on a scale factor of if I feel thrilled by it, really just the aesthetic and what it's trying to get across. And for me, I'm actually going to give it a 5 out of 10. Okay. Um, a little more critical there. Mm, like, I guess I, I'm i really just critical of it because the wait time is just really long for it. And, like, I kind of found the ride to be incredibly overrated. It was pretty much just Dumbo, but you got a really great view and it felt a little weird because it feels a little more fast-paced than Dumbo and... You know, you kind of got the generic rides of, oh, there's a ton of certain things, and they go around in a circle, and you get to go up and down in them. And So it's Dumbo with a altitude. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> go with that. Like, it's cool that you get to ride an elevator with it, um, and, I mean, it is just basically trying to accomplish, like, be J Dumbo, but higher up, and you get a good view of it, and it's a little faster pace, but I don't know. Dumbo itself was... Not always one of my favorites, and Astro Orbiter. It just seems kind of, my main factor is just that it was over, that it was overhyped. Okay, well, I, and I can't rate that one because I haven't gone on that one myself. But the next one that we have up is Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. Now this one I have been on. Um, so one of the things that, that, or some of the things that I look for in a ride for me are replayability. You know, do I want to go on a ride multiple times or is, is it the same thing over and over? There's nothing changing. There's nothing dynamic about the ride. So the rides that, that make me want to go on a more are rides I, I enjoy more. Um, interactive rides I enjoy, and, and Disney has, has certain got, certainly gotten better with those. Um, part of it's also the popularity of the ride, which, which works into the wait times as well. So there are a couple, in addition to what you guys had already talked about, there are a couple of things that I looked at, and one of the ones that I love is Buzz Lightyear because it's so interactive, and it's multi-person interactive. So you ride with a second person typically on there, and you're riding through, and it's a you know a ride on the rails type thing, but you've got targets all over the place, and you can spin your capsule around, so there's that level of dynamic interaction, and you get to keep score. So, you know, it can be a competition if I'm winning, because, you know, it's not a competition unless I'm winning. Yeah. Uh, so I would give Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin probably a 7 out of 10, because it's one of my more favorite rides. Okay. Mommy, what do you think? I would probably give it a 7 for, for the same, same reasons, um, because it can be a different ride every time you go on it, um, you know, which... Uh, you know, which targets do I hit? Um, you know, if you happen to do some research online before you go, there are cheat sheets out there uh, that'll tell you this target, if you hit this multiple times, you'll get the high score. You'll get the Galactic Ranger uh, prize for it. Um, you know, so that's what's kind of neat. Plus the fact that for most of the ride, you have control of what direction you're in. You know, even though you're on a track... You can still spin and you know go wherever you want. Yeah, I you love know, that level of go. control so that that's, they give you. That's an interesting twist uh, that most rides you know don't have. So right. yeah, I'd give it a seven. All right, Madison. Uh, you know what? I'll round out the trio and say I'll give it a seven as well. Well, there we go. It's a divine ride at seven, seven, seven. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's like 
It's definitely a fun ride for that aspect, the fact that it's so unique and you it's pretty much different every time and you can control most of the experience. Um I guess I only really dock points because um on a it's definitely not I don't find it to be a particularly whimsical ride, I guess. Um the theming is pretty cool, um, but it really I don't really have too much to complain about. It's kind of just like, it's certainly not one that I'd like go on all the time or it's one that I'm always like, like really psyched to do. It's like, if it's there, I'll do it. Like, that's kind of my thing. Is it sometimes not there? (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, uh, so, okay. So I think we're pretty much all on, on the same page on that one. So the next one that we have on our list is one that only you have gone on Madison, and that is Space Mountain. And that's also the only one that you've gotten lost on, too. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Can't can't talk about Space Mountain without that. So tell us... (sighs) You know... (laughs) (laughs) Tell us your thoughts on Space Mountain and how you'd rate that. All right, so... For Space Mountain, ignoring the fact I've been lost on it and that I have that traumatic experience to go off of it, the ride itself... I'll give it an 8 out of 10. It was actually a pretty fun ride. Granted, most of the time I was in anxiety, because going on the ride on my own, especially when I was younger, it's like, okay, I'm kind of scared, and then afterwards, occasionally I'm scared, but, you know. Um, So, so for Halloween, the Halloween party, there was a twist to it. So what was the twist, and does that affect your rating? Okay, so the initial ride is supposed to... The initial concept of the ride is supposed to be it's pretty much a dark roller coaster. You don't see really much. You like there's a few um areas that are lit up, like a few scenes, and like occasionally you'll get some visual, but most of the time you don't see the track. The Halloween twist on it was that every single light was out. You were in complete darkness the entire time unless you were boarding and exiting. Other than that, there was no light on the ride. So you saw nothing. There were no scenes. You saw absolutely nothing. And it was really jarring for me. Like, I w- like the one light-up tunnel wasn't working. The one scene with the space air- with the space people you didn't see. It was pl- pitch darkness. And, like, it made it scarier, I will admit. Like, you hear sounds and you don't know where they're coming from. And it's like... It is a legitimately kind of scary ride. Like, I know a lot of people might not be scared by that, but I was kind of scared uh, by it. Does it affect your rating, though? Uh, probably not, because I know it's, like, a special part of it, and it's not, like, the general ride. What I remember of the general ride was that it definitely had this really cool ambiance behind it, and it was supposed to be a dark roller coaster. You weren't supposed to see what was happening. You got a few cool scenes. It was definitely... Uh, cool theming and it's probably got one of the most iconic ride designs out of any of them um and i definitely it was definitely one of the more energized roller coasters when i compare it to something like big thunder mountain i realize big thunder mountain isn't all that much like there's definitely much more of a thrill factor when it comes to space mountain than it does with big thunder while big thunder certainly has a lot of thrill to it comparing the rides uh space mountain certainly has way more like twists and turns, drops and so forth. And it's definitely the scarier of the rides and thus the more thrill seeking. Okay. Um All right. I, I think that's a good summary. So the last one that we have here is one that uh you and mommy have been on, but I have not been on, and that is Tomorrowland Speedway. Why don't you tell us about that one, Mommy? So that's one of the I guess, original rides uh, from from the park. And it's these little cars that you get to ride. Um, As long as you're tall enough to touch the pedal, you can drive the car. It's on a track. Um, Depending on how busy the park is, uh, will determine how many uh, tracks they have going. When we went, there were just uh, two um, for the Halloween party. Um, and this was actually the first time that Maddie drove by herself. Um, usually all the other times that we've gone on it, we will 
ride together and all usually drive. Um, but this was her first driving experience. Wow. Uh, so it, it, it was kind of, kind of cute. Uh, cause it's one of those where you actually have control of the car. Obviously you can't go super fast, but you can go slow depending on how much, uh, you, you press on, on the gas. So it's not like one of those driving where, you know, you have no control of, of the car. So you actually do have control and you can bump you know, the, the median, uh, you know, the, the divider that keeps you on the track, you know, you can't keep bumping it, you know, back and forth, uh, like the steering wheel. So, okay. so yeah, that's always a fun one. Maddie, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I definitely found it to be a fun ride. Um, you get a little more control over it, even though you're still kind of going, you know, through the same track, but <laughs> Technically, you can have a different time on, like, how long the ride takes you. Like, you know, depending within a certain time limit, but, like, it's not one of those rides that's the same thing over and over again. So there's a little dynamic nature to how yeah, you like, drive it. Yeah, like, the people I w was in back of were driving really slow, <laughs> so I had <laughs> to go really slow, or else I would have crashed into them, because that's another thing, too, is that... You know, it's not like a bumper car where, you know, you're you not can. supposed to be bumping. Yeah. Right. So unfortunately, because they were going so slow, I had to go even slower so that I wouldn't hit them. So, so it's not a legitimate race that you can do. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So it's more like, you know, Disney's version of a traffic attraction. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd, <laughs> I'd give it a six. You know, it's, it's one of those. Do I need to go on it? Eh, yeah. If, okay. if, the, if the line's not long. We would do it. Right. Yeah, I'd yeah. probably go with 6.5. I will give it a bit more credit for being a more unique ride. You don't really find anything else much like it, so, you know. What kind of strikes me as odd is that they're still using gasoline-powered cars mm -hmm. for it. Yeah. In the in the world of so many go-kart places that do electric go-karts. Right, right. And you've got them pumping out fumes constantly here, which always kind of yeah. makes me scratch yeah. my head. Uh, so we did have a couple of honorable mentions. Uh, we're kind of up on the clock for the uh, segment here, so let's run through these real quick. So we have the Monsters, Inc. Laugh Floor. Now, I've sat through that. I think it's cute. I love the air conditioning in there. Of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'd give it probably a four because it's really not a lot. It's, there's a dynamic nature to it, but it's just not one that, that's particularly appealing to me. How would you rate that? I'd probably give it a six uh, because it is interactive. So, you know, most of the, the jokes kind of change. Um, there is some actual interaction with guests that are there and the monsters that are up on the screen. Um, plus it looks really, kind. you know, they kind of make it look like a nightclub right, when you go right. in because you're sitting in rows, but then they have, you know, like almost like tables with like little lights on it, you know? Okay. Um, but Ma with no w drink waitress, you know. Madison? I'd probably go in the middle between you two and pick a five. Um, it's certainly not something that I would, like, normally go on, but I do like the concept of it. It is more interactive. It, You know, it's one of those things where it's like, if it's there, you get the air conditioning for it. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my All right. Yep. And then there's my favorite ride uh, in Tomorrowland, and that is Walt Disney's Carousel of Air Conditioning. I mean, Progress. Uh, which uh, is a classic from the World's mm -hmm. Fair era of Disney. Yep. Uh, which they've updated. We didn't get to see it this time because we yeah. didn't get there in time before yeah. it got shut down. This one, just for nostalgic purposes, I'd give this one a six myself. But the unique thing about this is you get to see multiple different stage scenes of audio animatronics without having to get up and move because the audience actually moves around the stage. So I'd give that a six. What would you give that one, Michelle? I would actually give it a ten. Wow. That's nostalgia really wins out on that one. Yeah, yeah. Because of it, it the the whole uniqueness behind it, again, that, you know, the, the idea was we're going to build these four different scenes, um, you know, from four different decades and you know, the audience is going to rotate around it. So, you know, something completely different that, you know, hadn't been done before. And the fact that they can still 
modernize it and and keep the story going you know okay. where obviously things from the past it's interesting to see that it's interesting you know to take your kids and go yeah grandma had one of those or or if you're going with that that grandmother like yeah i grew up with that and to see what was considered modern how you know it's it's not as modern as it is now right. so so yeah i i would definitely give it give it a higher score All that's right. me madison I'll probably give it a 7.5 to 8 out of 10, because... Wow, well, that's that's complicated. Well, hmm. I really do like the ride. I always found, like... I really liked how, like, the various kitchen stuff would interact. I really liked the animatronics and how they'd interact, and the really cool way that they'd move us mm -hmm. um, around yeah. to the different areas. And I did always... Even though it was the same thing over and over, I still liked to hear what was modern of the time, and... Honestly, like, I really liked, like, the various people talking about all these modern stuff that was modern back then. The future scene's always really fun to see. And honestly, it was always, like, one of the air-conditioned areas that I really liked yeah. going to. Carousel of <laughs> air-conditioning. We're very big on air-conditioning. Yep. Uh, okay, I think that's all we had. There's, there's one the more. Back of your, uh, there is, but we're running short on time. We'll We'll throw it out there. Okay. Tomorrowland Transit Authority people I'm move. I'm just saying. There. Uh, well, let's talk about okay. it. You want to talk about it? We'll talk about it. It's not my podcast. I'm just saying you had another ride to people move. Give me your. You want to talk about it? Give me your thoughts on people move. It's a wonderful ride to go and relax and just enjoy and take a little tour of Tomorrowland because it's the only way I've ever gone on Space Mountain. <laughs> so, how would you rate it? <laughs> I'd give it a a seven. All right, Maddie? I'll give it a nine. I actually really like it, and honestly, it's a really nice way to move around. And, and wind up in the same spot. And wind yeah. up in the same spot. <laughs> and you? It's not the most efficient way of moving, but uh, I'd give it a seven. Uh, it's a great chance to cool off, even mm -hmm. though you're not in air conditioning the whole time. Yeah. You're moving, um, and you, you get a little quick tour of of Tomorrowland, which I think is is kind of interesting, and listening to the, the announcers and some of the mm -hmm. you know kitschy theme stuff that they do there, I think it's again it's one of those nostalgia ones that that you have to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was all we have for Tomorrowland. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back to talk about Fantasyland and more. We'll be right back. <laughs> For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights and the Team. This week we are recapping our trip to Disney and ranking rides in Magic Kingdom. Now we're going to talk about Fantasy Island. I mean Fantasyland. Uh, the first one that we have in here is one that I think everybody knows, loves, and can't get the damn tune out of their mind. And that is It's a Small World. Now I'll go first on this and say I avoid this whenever possible. And I managed to not go on it this time around. I know people love it for the nostalgia. It's just a little too creepy for me. And that song is like fingernails on a blackboard. I would give this one a three. Madison, what's your rating? I'd probably give it an eight. Um, well, I'm not annoyed by the ride as you are. I will admit the song is an earworm. It's one of those songs you can never get out of your head as soon as it's mentioned. 
So let me sing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. Um, I like the ride. It's a cute ride. You get a bunch of representation from a lot of different areas, and it's really nice to see the different cultures. It's cool to hear the song in different languages. Um, and there are some really cute um, scenes that I look forward to seeing. Okay. Michelle. I will give it an eight. Of course you will. And why is that? <laughs> Justify that eight. <laughs> For the same reason. It's it's the nostalgia part of it. Um, I think as well, hearing the song in the different languages. It's a very, uh, you know, it, it's one of those things that's kind of timeless in a way. So yes, it's it's can be an annoying song hearing it over and over again, but the message behind it about, you know, how it is a small world after all, and, and showing that no matter what your background is, we can all have fun together and enjoy ourselves is, is the message behind it. Thanks. Uh, next up is the 90 minute wait. <laughs> Peter Pan's flight. I've been on this. I love this ride. I think it's cool. It's a hanging coaster ride. You get to fly over London. Uh, it's, it's a really cool concept. It's not worth the wait. Even the lightning lanes. We were there at the end of the day and the lightning lane had a 20 minute wait there just to get on this ride. And the ride's literally like two minutes. It's one of the shortest rides in the park. It's not that unique. I would give this one probably a four because of how long the wait is. And if, if you're burning a lightning lane to get on this, it's a waste of a lightning lane pass, in my opinion. Michelle? I'd give it a nine. Of course you would. While I agree, we never, I have never waited more than 15, 20 minutes to, to get on it. Um, I think that's the, the sad part of the ride is that there are people that will wait, you know, an hour, you know, 45 minutes to go on such a short ride. And that's one where if it was a little bit longer of a ride, but it's just, again, it's a neat concept because most rides you're on the ground and this one you're actually hanging as you're, you know, going through and, and seeing everything. So that's why I give it a, a higher score. Okay, yeah, that's perfectly fine. Madison? I'm going to give it a seven. Um, a little more realistic, okay. It is a nice ride that it is a hanging ride, and it's not like you're on an actual track most of the time, so I will give it that. The wait time obviously deteriorates from it and the fact that it is such a short ride, but... I do like seeing the various scenes. You get different perspectives. In certain instances, you're basically the same scale as all of the characters. In other instances, you're literally over top of a very small London. So I do like the differences in perspective when it comes to that. However, do I think it's worth the wait time most of the time? No. Um, it's certainly not a ride that I would go on while waiting in that long line, because I definitely do not think it's worth it. Um, but for what the ride is, it's really cute. Can I justify the wait time? No. But is it a unique ride? Yes. Okay. Very well thought out. So the next one that we have is another one that only Madison has gone on, and that's the relatively new roller coaster Seven Doors Mine Train. Tell us about that one, because you've gone on this one repeatedly in a row as you burned our fans' passes in the past. <laughs> yes. So clearly you have an affinity for this ride. Yeah. Um, I definitely find this ride to be very interesting. It's definitely a very interesting roller coaster because there's certain areas where there's actual scenes that are played out. There's one where you're in the mines and like they're like an audio animatronics and it kind of stops for a bit. And, like, then after, when it's time for them to all go, that's when the ride starts to pick up. I definitely find the aesthetic of it really cool, because when you're walking through, like, the longer lines, there's, like, interactive areas, which is really cute. Um, I like the cart style. It's a really nice aesthetic, and it's also one of the more fun roller coasters. You get, like, more drops. It's definitely way more fast-paced. But then there's moments where you do get, you know, uh, to slow down and see the scenes and appreciate 
the audio animatronics. Um, so I'll give it, I'll give it an eight point five. Okay, I think that's a very well thought out, very well reasoned answer on that one. Uh, the next one we've all been on, and that's the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. And I will, the only thing I will say here, I'll give this a, actually, I'll give this a, a seven because I think a, it's a cool ride. It's a fun ride, especially if you're a fan of Winnie the Pooh. If you have a bad back. The Tigger section is not your friend. And I'll just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Michelle, what are your thoughts? I, I would give it an 8. Um, because it's it's a unique variation of the, the classic dark ride. Um, what is kind of cool is you go through different scenes throughout the Winnie the Pooh story with different characters. And each scene kind of takes on a... Um, uh, a whole different theming and even your ride takes upon that theming as well. So to kind of mention about, you know, the Tigger, there's a scene with rain that's very cleverly done with to, uh, to, to portray that while not actually having any water at all, you know, in the ride. Madison? I'll actually give it a nine. Uh, my main reasoning being, again, like you said, it's a very unique dark ride. Not only is it, like, very uniquely styled, you have various things that are 2D, three-dimensional, digitally animated. Like, there's a lot to appreciate in the ride because there's, like, such a diverse amount of, oh, well, this is 2D, but you got 3D animatronics, you've got certain areas that are animated and such. And, like, I really enjoy that aspect of it. And also, I... Uh, on the better judgment of your back, I do like that there are certain instances where your, like, motion changes. You're kind of jumping in the Tigger scene. Like, you're kind of moving in different areas, and it's not just a straight, regular ride. You feel, during, like, the rain scene, you start to feel like you're floating. It's like, it definitely tries to play with your with the motion a bit more. And I do like the interactive stuff that they have um during the wait time. I think that's a really cute area, so, nine. I do miss... Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, just saying. Got to go to California for that. I know, well. And we did. And we did. So. so. Uh, next up, we have Undersea, Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid. And I, have I been on this? I don't remember. Yeah, yeah you have. Okay. You just don't remember. So I, I can't rate it because I don't actually remember it. So, Michelle, why don't you give us your. Uh, I would give it an eight. It's a. Uh, a more modern take on the dark ride. And um, since it was built into a brand new area of fantasy land, they were actually able to make it a longer ride. Um, the problem that you have with like Winnie the Pooh and um, uh, Peter Pan is that it's a short ride because of the way they built it. You know, they've never been able to really expand it to make it a longer ride. Whereas with The Little Mermaid, it's the same concept um, of basically telling the story of, of the movie, but it's longer. Um, so you, it, it doesn't go by as quick as some of the other ones. So I would give it uh, an 8. Okay. And Madison? I'd probably do the same thing. I'd give it an 8. Um, it is definitely a way longer dark ride, and it's certainly way more unique and bright and colorful compared to most dark rides. Um, so I can definitely give it that aspect. It reminds me a lot of Winnie the Pooh, except I gave Winnie the Pooh a little bit of a higher score because it had more unique stuff in it, like 2D and 3D digital animation as well as the moving cart. It, with the shells, you're kind of doing the same motion. You have, like, the different animatronics and such, and my favorite scene is the Under the Sea part. Mm -hmm. That's, like, a really big and open area. Uh, but I definitely think it uh, it deserves an A compared to what I gave Winnie the Pooh. Okay, I think that's a good review. So I did take liberty and broke out the next two from Fantasyland to really what's a subsection of the area, and that's the Storybook Circus area there, which is a whole other area that you can explore through Fantasyland. There's two rides there. One is Dumbo the Flying Elephant, which I had gone on ages ago before they redid it. Um, but it's the same ride, but I will give my two cents on the redo where they put a second one in. My biggest complaint was how long the wait was versus how long the ride was. 
they obviously mitigated a lot of that by putting a second ride in, so they've literally got two sets of the same ride there. But the biggest thing for me was they put the circus tents in where you come in now, you get a reservation, you get a little buzzer like it's a uh, a, a buzzer a thing you get from a <laughs> restaurant. And there's a play area for the kids. It's air conditioned, and the parents can go in there and wait with the kids, and the kids can have fun until it's your turn. Which, you know, I ding Disney for the fact that they don't lower the wait times on rides. They just try to make waiting less painful. And this was one of the most successful ways of them doing that. So I'd actually give the ride a six. The ride itself is, a you know, the standard ride about up and down type ride. So the ride's not thrilling. The overall experience, I think, is, and it's a great way of handling those, those weights. Michelle? I would probably give it a six as well for the, the same thing. Um, you know, it was definitely interesting them changing it up, adding the second one because they always knew, you know, and, and I think the biggest thing was people were waiting to go on it because of the nostalgia of it. Because you can basically go to any amusement park right. or any you know, carnival and, and go on something like that, but it's Dumbo. And, you know, when they added the whole uh, tent and the waiting, you know what? I rather have my little kid running around and waiting and burning off energy than, you know, standing in a line. And that's where I think the, the difference is, is, yeah, so some of these cues have things for you to play as you're still waiting in the line here you don't feel like you're waiting right. in the line so it's it's a little different it's almost like having a virtual queue really yeah, yeah. it was kind of the the first version of it so yeah i like that yeah i'll also round it off and just say six while the ride certainly isn't thrilling so on this itself. is a satanic ride then six 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah i would definitely give it a six because just because the ride isn't necessarily thrilling, but the wait time is certainly one of the more unique wait times. And again, it doesn't feel like you're actually waiting. The ride itself is really just generic. Um, it's kind of like any other ride of itself. But with the wait time, it's a better experience. So, yeah. Six. Okay. I like that. So, the last one that we have in our premiere rides, I guess we'll call it, is the Barnstormer, which is a roller coaster which is only one of two roller coasters that I've ridden at Disney World. The other one we didn't realize was a roller coaster. Oh, right, right. We'll get into that one later. Okay. So I've ridden the, the Barnstormer several times, actually, with you and with Sam when Sam was smaller. I will rate it from the perspective of a person of size. It's a fun roller coaster. It's not very comfortable for someone. And I'm not saying, you know, someone who's large, but someone who's tall. It does not accommodate somebody with long legs very well. Um, so it's a quick roller coaster, but it's a fun one. I'd give it a seven. It's it's one of my more favorite thrill rides, I think, that I go on there. Um, so that's my take on that one. What's your take, Michelle? It's my only roller coaster kind of that I go on. <laughs> yeah. So, woo, it was the only one. Ten. Yeah, it's the only one I could convince you to actually go and, on. And it and it took a lot to get me on it. Uh, you know, I am so not a fan, um, you know, of roller coasters. And, you know, here's a, uh, a teaser when we get to Epcot and we talk about Test Track. It took me three years to convince myself to get on Test Track. So you figure it probably took me just as long to get on you know, barnstormer. So since you would go on with the kids, it was like, oh, this is all you. I'm yeah. gonna, I'll hold the stuff. Um, so for you know, for me not being a roller coaster person, you know, it, it's fun. Um, you know, I can, I can, I can handle it, and I scream just as much. Uh, you know, each time, and and I've gone on it multiple times. You know, yeah. in a night. Um, so I, I'd, I'd give it an eight because okay. you know. And and I, I agree, it's definitely a kid roller coaster, so I think that's why taller people have issues with it, because it's really not meant for the bigger kids, but it's nice that adults can at least go on it, you know, with their kids, so. And you. 
I'll probably give it an 8 as well. Um, I give it an 8 mainly because I kind of like the theming. Like, there's a certain area where you go up and you go through, like, this one thing. Basically, the entire concept is just that Goofy is supposed to be, like, this circus guy and he, like, does a bunch of stuff. You see a, pun a bunch of stuff in the queue where it's, like, he's failed at something or he's tried something and just... And as a barnstormer, he's he's supposed to be, like, a 1920s you know, stunt flyer type mm -hmm. thing, and the roller coaster itself is themed that. In fact, you can sit under the wing, which I did the one time, and that didn't work out too well right, getting in right. and out. So yeah. I wouldn't recommend doing that if you're tall. Sit somewhere else. Um. So, yeah, I'll give it an 8. While it's definitely not a thrilling roller coaster, I do love the theming of it, and it's the only roller coaster you've ever really been on. So I appreciate that aspect of it all right so our honorable mentions we have three honorable mentions for fantasy land we've got mickey's philhar magic which it, again you know it's a great air-conditioned ride i never liked the queue because they wind up packing you in there like cattle and it takes so long for the next show because they'll start packing you in yeah, I, you've got I, a 20 minute wait. i don't understand why they have the queue the way they do because especially if not to go off on a tangent but especially when you don't have a long line there's you know in most cases they kind of rope things off so that you just do half the line right. that one there's no way to cut it so you're still going in and out and you know exactly how long the wait is it's right. always the same amount of time right. unless something breaks with the show right. right so i'd give this one a five it's not one of those ones that I look to see over and over again. I've probably seen it a half dozen times. It's a 4D ride. You know, they do the blowing the stuff in your face and the smoke and this, you know. And it's not a ride. Epic. It's a movie. Right. It's a movie. But it's a 4D movie that they do that's a great break if you just need some place to cool off and relax for a little bit and watch a movie and be done with it. The score is awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, the music yeah. that's in there. And, and unfortunately, they have added a couple of scenes since we've seen it. So we haven't actually seen it with the new enhanced, right. you know, scene. So it is something that at least they're updating right. as, you know, different so things come out. So five for me, Madison. I'll probably go with a six. I definitely liked the uh, 3D, 4D aspect to it. Um, I always found it to be a fun ride. Well, eh. attraction. Uh, for, attraction for what it was. Uh, wasn't one that I'd go on constantly, obviously. So, yeah. Okay. Six. Okay. I think we're all on the same page there. Next honorable mention we have is Prince Charming's Regal Carousel, which, by the way, hails from New Jersey. Um, I've never actually been on it. All the times that I've been there, I've never been on the carousel. No air conditioning, so no, there's not no. much appeal for me. Madison, you've been on it. What are your thoughts? I don't know if I entirely remember it, but um, I guess I'll give it before mainly because it's a carousel i don't know if there's really much else to it you get like the sword of the stone but it's like it's really just one of those regular rides i don't know if there's nostalgia attached to it i don't find nostalgia attached to it it's one of those rides i really don't okay fair enough michelle i'd probably give it a a five you know just because it's probably one of the best upkept carousels versus you know if you go to you know, other theme parks or, you know, carnivals or things like that. They take pride in, in their horses. Yeah. They, you know, take them down and will, you know, refurbish them and, and repaint them. And, and, you know, again, if you do research, you know, almost every horse has some sort of backstory right. ab about it, of the design of who it's named after and things like that. So, okay. Yeah. You know. Sounds good. And the last honorable mention is another one that I haven't been on, and that's the Mad Tea Party Teacup. You didn't go on that? Nope, never went on it. Thoughts? Um, uh, I guess I'll, uh, give it a six. It's kind of cool, one of the cooler spinning rides, not one that I'd really go on all that much, but, you know, it's cool theming. Okay. I'd give it a five. It's, you know, your typical teacup spinning there's nothing really you know different but the the you're certainly not selling it to make me go on to this one well yeah. it, i don't like spinning rides so yeah that, you know okay. i the the memory i have is you know my dad 
trying not to spin it and he ends up spinning it more. So it's, <laughs> that just kind of, you know, killed it for me. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So that's all we have for our fantasy land segment. We're going to be right back. We'll take another quick break. We're moving on to Adventureland, Frontierland, and our ever popular Liberty Square. We'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. We are ranking Magic Kingdom rides today. And next up is Adventureland, where a couple of our biggest uh, rides are that we like. First up is Jungle Cruise. And if you love cheesy jokes and dad jokes, then Jungle Cruise is for you. I actually would give the, because there's nothing thrilling about the Jungle Cruise. Although there's a couple buildups at certain areas there where you anticipate something and then you don't get it. But, you know, you can't really ask for anything cooler than the backside of water, though. I know, right? Not I would, of the world. Exactly. I would give the Jungle Cruise an 8. It's one of my favorite rides in the park. Michelle? I would give it a 10. Of course you would. <laughs> so you can't get anything better. Like, 10 to me is like the absolute best and there's nothing better. Well, and what I enjoy about it is that it's ever-changing. Like, obviously, they're always going to keep the backside of water joke in. But every now and then, there's a new joke that kind of pops in. And that's what I enjoy about it because it is a little bit different from time to time. Um, they did recently update a bunch of the, the scenes. Um, so that was kind of neat to, to see that difference when we went, um, you know, this last time. So, and again, part of the scoring is also the nostalgia behind it. It's, um, you know, one of the original rides. It's still there. It's still relevant. Um, and the jokes kind of keep changing on it. So Kind of grow on you. Yep. Like a fungus. Like moss. Madison? <laughs> I'm going to give it a nine. Um, I definitely really like the ride. It's definitely one of the ones where it's like, it's slightly, it's definitely one of the ones where it's really kind of fun because you actually get like the cast member interaction and the backside of water is obviously going to be like the most amazing, was the most amazing thing ever. Um, the last time we were on it, they definitely did change some of the scenes. There was certainly some more new jokes. Um, and really, I like the aesthetic of it. It's really not, it's a water ride, but you're not going to really get much, uh, anything like it. So. Okay. So the next one we have is not, is one that you don't always go on. It's another, you know, spinny, lifty ride. And that's, uh, the magic carpets of Aladdin. Uh, that's one I've not been on. Uh, the two of you did get a chance to go on it at the tail end of our stay on Friday. Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts, Michelle? Uh, I would give it a six. Um, you know, again, it's your typical up and down ride, but what's kind of interesting is the person that's in the front uh, controls the up and down, and the person in the back can actually make your carpet, you know, pitch forward and, and backward. Okay. Um, Unfortunately, because of where it's situated, when you do get up high, you're not really getting as nice of a view of the park as you do with the Astro Orbiter. Um, but it's it's one of those, hey, if the line is short enough, let's go on it. And that's what happened, you know, when we were at the, the party. The party was literally ending and they were like, hey, last, last call. call yeah. And we got on it, so... 
Yeah, I'd probably give it a 6 as well, mainly for that extra mechanic of one person can control going up and down and the other person can tilt you guys. Um, the unlike, unlike with the others, the queue really isn't all that unique. It's really just a bunch of bars, but there is a camel just that's... Just a bunch of bars. <laughs> but <laughs> not alcohol bars, folks. <laughs> no, not prison bars. <laughs> just like general metal bars. And like a fence. Just a regular yes. queue yeah. line. Fence. Yeah. There's um, not as much theming to it. But you got a camel spitting at you, so you got that. You can't beat that, <laughs> right? Can't go wrong with that. Nope. So, yeah, six. All right, sounds good. So, and the last one of the premier rides in Adventureland uh, is another great ride, another one of our favorites, another one of the originals, and that's Pirates of the Caribbean, which, again, great air-conditioned ride, four-hour walk to get there <laughs> through the inside of the of the queue, uh, but it's, you know, it's a water ride. You get a little drop there. You get a lot of theming in there. Uh, for Halloween, they were doing some characters uh, in the ride yeah, itself. Yeah, they actually had live actors uh, situated throughout the queue, as well as on the ride, uh, interacting with you as you kind of went through. And it kind of made you think, you know, they should really do this a little bit more often. Yeah. Kind of a, a neat concept to it. So, so I'd give it a, I'd give it an 8 myself. What would you give it? You know what I'm going to give it. A 10, I know. Of course, it's a 10. I'm just glad you're not going to 11. This isn't Spinal Tap. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd actually give it a 10 as well. I really like the theming of it. The queue, while it certainly is very long, they updated it, and it very much gives you the pirate aesthetic. While it is a very long ride, like, I really... You immediately get entrenched in it when you walk into the ride. You got cannons, yeah, you got, yeah. like... It's a really... F like, while there's not, like, activities to do, it's really amazing to just look at it. It's you almost get... like walking through a museum. Yeah, because you're literally respect. walking through a recreation of a Spanish fort, mm -hmm. which is really neat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and I definitely like, obviously, the ride itself. You got, like, a really cavey, creepy aesthetic in the beginning. You get the drop. And then you start finally getting into the pirate areas. You got Jack Sparrow. You have the various scenes that, are al that were altered. Um... And, then, and people are still bitter about the redhead, so yeah, there's well, that too. We'll get over it. Yeah, eventually. But yeah. Okay. So, and we're going to hold off all of our honorable mentions for all these different areas until the end of this segment. So, okay. there are some for, for Adventureland. Next, we're going to move on to Frontierland. So, Frontierland has one that Maddie only has gone on, and that is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, which you go on quite frequently. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I will say, I do like the theming of it, especially in the queue, like, you get a really cool minor aesthetic, there's a lot of various signage that you can read when you go on, like, the longer wait times. Maybe one day she'll actually take pictures for us, or video. What a novel idea. Mm. Okay, fine, I'll do that next time, alright? <laughs> Um, but, yeah, there's a really cool aesthetic to it. You're actually in a legitimate train. It's not really, like, your typical roller coaster looking thing. It's supposed to be this runaway train. Unlike the one in Hollywood Studios. We're not gonna worry about that. Uh, but it's a really cool one. There's, like, parts where you're outside, parts where you're inside. There's, like, this really cool cavern, which was supposed to, I think, be, like... A memorial to the original ride that was there, which was a much slower train ride through, like, Raybone Caverns and things like that. So there's, like, some parts of that, too. It's certainly not as thrilling of a roller coaster as some of the other ones are, like I mentioned with Space Mountain earlier. Um, but it's still one that I really like to go on purely for the aesthetic and that it is still, like, a really fun roller coaster, but it's definitely a little more tame. It's really in between uh, the intensity of barnstormer and uh space mountain okay I so like so maybe one day yeah. i'll one, get on it maybe one, one day. day one day um i'll give it a 7.5 okay. okay so the next ride is one that i like to refer to as extortion mountain it's actually splash mountain but we extorted mommy several times to get her <laughs> to start going on it 
and shamed uh, her into it mm-hmm. uh, because we all remember the first time that we took mommy on that. We well, got, the first time all three of us tried. But that wasn't my on. first time no, on it. it. I had already is, been know, on it, but I had such a traumatic experience I didn't right. want to go on it. Right. So it wasn't your first time on it, but because no. you were going to wind up sitting in the front, you <laughs> said, bailed as soon as you got on to that. Yeah, it was, oh, I have you to sit were, there. It was our first time going on it. Right. You, it was like your second, and as soon as you saw that we were in the front line, you're like, nope, we're out. Yeah. Oh, uh, and then you and I actually went on it. We sat in the front, which uh, didn't work out very well because being a person of size myself and not being a small, what were you, seven at the time maybe when we did it, the lap bar did not really secure you very well because of It still doesn't. Me. Uh, so I was terrified that you'd be coming out there. So I was very cautious and making sure I was holding you tight next to me at the time. Uh, I love it. It's probably one of the longest rides in the park itself, which can almost justify the weight that it has because it's always usually got a long weight. I would give this one a nine just for theming, um, for air conditioning because you do go through an air conditioned area there. Uh, and the drop, you can't beat that drop at the end. That's literally the most thrilling ride, I think, in Disney because of that drop. Michelle? I would probably give it a 9 as well. Not a 10? No. Wow, okay. Because I'm terrified. <laughs> because of the emotional distress that it causes. <laughs> like, I, I really have to work myself up to it, even though I've been on it numerous times now. Yeah. And, you know, I know what's going to happen, so... No. Well, and that last drop, the worst part is, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you know it's coming because right, yeah. there's this incredibly long right. incline up to it, so and it's not even like a surprise. Vulture, right, yeah, and, and like the, the vultures. vultures are talking to you, like teasing you, and you're like, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is like, and, and all I kept, you know, I think the first time I, I went on it, I kept thinking to myself, I, I fly on planes, I go through turbulence, and, you know, it takes longer to, you know, this is going to be over in, in three seconds, you know, d- you'll be fine, one, two, three, why is this taking so long, and, ah! you know, and then you're like, all right, I'm good, hold on, let me clear off my glasses now, because I can't see. Yeah. So, nine, nine, and for you? I'll also give it a nine. <laughs> it's the reverse devil. The reverse devil. There's the upside down devil. <laughs> I really do like it. Um, it's certainly um, a very unique ride. It's a, it's the only log flume technically in Disney. My only reason for putting it lower is just that anxiety that you feel. You know that the drop is but there that's because what makes I mean, it such a good ride. Yeah, right. that's what makes it such a good because ride. Because you know it's there. You've done it multiple times, and it's still that Scares anxiety. You. And as soon as you get over it, it's zip. It's like yeah, it's like it's immediately chill. You don't even worry about it afterwards. It's like the majority of the ride. You're just, you know it's coming because it's advertised so much. You've been on it multiple right. times. You will get wet. Da, you da, will da, da, get wet. Da, 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 all this other stuff. You see all the exits, and it's like, oh my god. And Why then you am get I the, doing this? And then like you just feel that anxiety constantly throughout the entire ride. And then immediately when you get to the vulture, it's like, oh my god, this is it. I can't go back now. And then you just go all the way up. And then you finally drop down, and like you're screaming. And then afterwards, it's just like, oh, you gotta chill. You got a little, little drop there. But then that's yeah. No, you you laugh. <laughs> I even but... leaned out the one time we got a picture of you. <laughs> <laughs> it will be interesting to see because they are retheming it for um, Princess and the Frog, so it'll be interesting to see how all of that gets gets yeah. redone. Be you know, because obviously the the ride is probably still going to be the same. I don't think they're going to change how it goes. It's right. just what will you see and what will you interact with. So we're actually going to skip our next segment right now and go on to our honorable mentions, just so we can get them out of the way. Okay. Uh, so our first honorable mention is another great air-conditioned attraction that we have, and that is Hall of Presidents, uh, which is, if you're a history buff, if you're into politics or anything like that, great educational ride, very inspirational, not ride, attraction, but it's very inspirational to sit through I'd give this one an eight myself um, under the current administration. That could change in the future. Um, it is dictated by the current administration uh, because the current 
president uh, is a premier focus in audio animatronic. Uh, so it's important to note that. Michelle, what would you give? I would probably give it a nine. It's okay. it's one of those, um, and and especially because it's something that gets updated pretty om- almost every four years, really. With you four know four or eight, four or eight, um, and even sometimes you know back in the day they really didn't update. You know, like the the president part got updated, but maybe the rest of the story didn't get updated. But now they've been updating the story a little bit more. So there's, you know, some history to it. And I like that they, you know, feature various different presidents. It's not just about who the current president is, right. but, you know, who had an impact no matter what political party you, uh, you know, they were part and of. And who didn't have an impact is obvious, too, from the Absolutely. From the so it, that's what's, you know, it's a great way to kind of have that you know, 20, 25 minute history lesson and, you know, be comfortable and, yep. and get out of the rain or get out of the heat. And, you know, if you're a kid and you want to take a nap, take a nap. And for those parents, you know, or those others that are interested in the, the history lesson, it, it's a nice, nice little lesson. Madison. I'll give it a seven. I've never really been all that much of a history buff myself, um, but I can certainly appreciate what it's trying to do. It's definitely trying to teach you more about it and bring more awareness to that kind of stuff. And I do appreciate that it has, that it does change. I personally, it's it's really just one of those rides that I wouldn't really go on unless I'm trying to escape the rain, really. Okay. That brings us to our next honorable mention, and that is the Enchanted Tiki Room. In the Tiki 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 Tiki. Don't do that. They're going to give us a takedown notice. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> um, so this is again is another uh, air conditioned sit down attraction. You got a little pre show that goes on there, a little comedy show and stuff. You go in and there's some singing and there's some jokes and there's a lot of craning of the neck to look up and there's benches that aren't very comfortable, but there's air conditioning and that's really the most important thing. This I'd give a six. Okay. Michelle? I'd give a nine. Okay. Because Again, it's a nostalgia thing. The, the, the birds were the original animatronic, audio animatronics that Walt had designed. They were designed. the original employees who were the souls original have been encapsulated <laughs> in audio right. animatronics. Um, they, at, at some point, they had revamped the show and made it worse. And a lot of people hated the show and refused to go to it and... You know, at least Disney realized they had made a mistake and kind of reverted it. It was their new back. Coke moment. Huh? Yeah, it was their new Coke moment, and they kind of went back, still modified it a little bit, but but brought things back a little bit better. They they realized, you know what? Don't mess with if it's not broken, don't fix it. Right. Um, and you know, so again, it, it's one of those attractions that not everybody wants to to go, but if you want a nice little break and see, you know, again how uh, audio animatronics have evolved throughout the years. Here's a good starting point to see how they start. Madison? 7.5. It's um, a good... I like the theming of it. Um, It is cool to see the audio animatronic birds. Uh, Not one that I'd go on constantly, but it's a nice air conditioning ride, and I certainly prefer it over Hall of Presence if I'm looking to get air conditioning. Okay. And the last honorable mention we have is a Tex Ritter special, Country Bear Jamboree. (laughs) Uh, This one I've actually only sat through like, I think, two or three times. It's an interesting show. Mm -hmm. Um, Not one that really tickles my fancy. I'd give this one probably a four. What would you give it? I'd there? probably give it a seven. It's it's a cute little get out of the air conditioning, you know, musical um, variety show type thing. Again, this was one that they had modified it at one point. People didn't like the newer version of it, so they kind of brought it back. So it it's kind of interesting. You have this whole cast of different characters. And a nice way to spend, you know, 15, 20 minutes uh, in, in the air conditioning. And the seats are a little bit more padded, so. Okay. Madison? <laughs> I'll give it a five. I don't 
I only remember being on it once, really. Um, it's certainly not one of the ones that I, it was, it's like a go-to air conditioning spot. It was really just there. I didn't actually know it existed for a bit. Um, the bear, like, it's interesting, but, like, I don't know. P- other uh, other attractions do it better. That's really all I can say. Okay, I can't argue with that. So, honorable mentions are out of the way. This brings us to our last attraction. We saved the best for last. This was at Liberty Square. And this brings us to the Haunted Mansion. And, Michelle, we're going to let you head this one off. What do you want me to say about it? Whatever it is you want to say about it. (laughs) How much time you got? (laughs) Um, Well, if you've ever listened to our podcast or, you know, anything that I've I've talked to, um, and if you don't know, the Haunted Mansion is my absolutely, absolutely most favorite ride ever. Um, There is nothing that, for me, that that tops it um and it, it's an 11 for me <laughs> i can't uh you know it, it's just one there's the nostalgia part of it you know i remember going on it as a kid i remember not being scared of it um you know and i you know i was heartbroken when maddie would be scared of it as a kid i'm like but no you're my daughter you should love this ride like i do um and it's one of those things where um for so long you know you had people who loved the haunted mansion but you know you could never find things for it you couldn't find merchandise for it and now it's there's almost too much merchandise for it so it's nice that it's finally gotten the love that it you know uh, it's deserved it'll be interesting to see what the second version of the movie co- comes to be you know how they do it justice but it's just one of those you know it, it's a dark ride but there's various different tricks that they do you have the pepper's ghost and there's some holograms and just the lighting and and you know just all these different things that they do to it and you know they've updated updated it throughout you know the years but still keeping a lot of the original aspect of it i do like that they don't change it for nightmare before christmas in florida um but i do like that they change it for nightmare before christmas in 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 disneyland and that that's an interesting take on it um you know my my bucket list would be to visit all of the other parks and see their other versions of it um so it I, I, you know i don't know why it has that effect on me it just it just does it's one of those right. things it just always has and you know it's once you finally get inside it's great air conditioning and it's you know hysterical that the cast members have to be mean or have to be, you know, grimacing. You know, it's one of the only areas of of the park where the cast members won't smile at you. You know, they're kind of mean to you a little bit. So, All right, Madison, what's your take on this one? And remember, it's Mommy's favorite ride. She can hate it if she wants. It's okay. I won't be upset. I'm going to give it a 10. Um, Smart move. While I definitely don't have an insane amount of love for it like you do, I can certainly really appreciate it. I certainly appreciate that it's one of the rides that certainly tried, quote-unquote, to be scary in the minds of Disney. It's definitely one of the rides that you're never really going to see. Like, it's probably one of the most unique rides. You got, like, your dark rides, but they're not supposed to be scary all that much. But this, you have legitimate ghosts. There's dead people. There's jokes about being dead. And there aren't any actual dead people on the ride. Just I mean, for the yeah, record. just right. to, for the record, it there is. are already ghosts. So yes, um, I really enjoyed the aesthetic of it. Um, I liked the queue that they added. Um, again, it was one of the more interactive queues, but you got actually way more different stuff than you normally get in other queues. Like, there's a murder mystery part to it. There's like this thing where like you actually respond to a voice. There's, like, various musical instruments you can tap. It definitely has more unique stuff to do, and it's not, and it can be, and it's necessarily for more 
older audiences. While you got stuff for little kids, there's more, like, stuff where you actually have to think. And, like, the murder mystery specifically can be specifically for the adults. Um, I do like uh, the cue where they added Madame Leota and she, like, interacts and stuff. That's a really cool tombstone. Um, it's interesting how you go into the ride where it kind of starts, although you're not really on the ride. The stretching portraits is very iconic for this. You get, like, the narration. Again, the cast members being the cast members that you would never really see. Like, all the cast members always seem to smile or something. Nope, here they don't smile. And one of their jokes that I heard before was, like, I've seen the dead move faster than you. And, like, they always have these monotone voices. I absolutely love, like, dealing with those cast members. Even, like, dealing with people who are... Occasionally we'd like take you in your scooter because you can't walk all the long distance, and even then they're still in character. Right, right. Um, and the ride itself is really fun. It has a lot of Pepper's ghosts, and that's really fun. I love how it makes you think that there's a bunch of ghosts. I love all the different tricks to it. The doom buggies are really fun. The aesthetic is just really great. So yeah, ten. Okay. Well, I would give it a nine because I don't give anything tens. Right. Uh. What I like is the array of technology that's in use. You have technology that's literally like 18th century technology with the Pepper's Ghost stuff all the way up to 21st century stuff with holograms. It runs the gamut and they make it work. It, it It's believable. Mm-hmm. It's legitimate the way it works. And there's a fantastic set of stories. I wouldn't even say there's a storyline. There's numerous stories that are told throughout here that if you take the time to actually do a little research and see what these stories actually are, the stories themselves are very well thought out. They're very well themed. And the ride captures a lot of that exceedingly well. Um, the, the, you, you feel immersed. There's a level of immersion to this ride that you don't feel. And a lot of that comes from the characters, mm-hmm. you know, the, the, the cast that's, that's there Even when you're interacting with them, you know, you mentioned that I I have my scooter. Even when you're interacting with them in an official capacity from a safety standpoint where they don't necessarily need to be in character, they still are and they still maintain that level of professionalism. So it's a performance, you know, from Mm -hmm. from the people that in our case we saw it. We went in for the the Halloween um, event. And you had live characters that were in the graveyard interacting with people in character, which is cool. But the people that walk you in, the people that are riding the, mach- the running the machines, everybody's in character. Yeah, like the one lady, since there was a line of people that were using scooters and such, they were saying only two carriages are allowed in each succession. And it's like they were in character the entire time. They referred to you to them as carriages and it's like it was really cool and the whole land the whole area around it is themed Mm -hmm. you know the queue is themed you walk out you have the pet cemetery you have the music you have the gift shop is themed that entire Mm -hmm. area is the hearse you have the hearse out front the queue lines Mm -hmm. everything when you walk into that area you literally feel like you're part of it you know you've got the external effects on the facade of the mansion, which you don't usually get that on most of the other rides. Mm -hmm. You know, it's an immersive experience just walking past it, not even getting on the ride. Right. Yeah. So it's a very well done ride and it really draws you into it. So it's, it's definitely one of the best well run rides. I think that they have. I think that is it. I'm sure there's a lot of other things that we could talk about with magic kingdom, but we were just trying to confine ourselves to the, uh, attractions uh, in this podcast. Uh, I think we'll be back next week with our Hollywood Studios review, followed uh, closely by our Epcot review. Uh, any closing thoughts that we want to throw out there for folks? No? Okay. Don't buy the Genie Plus. It's a scam. <laughs> Um, yeah, I that's guess. my two cents. Fair enough. Uh, but I think that's it. Before we do go, I do want to uh, once again uh, invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights in the Teens. You can also find audio and video of all of the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. 
We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, Castro, etc., etc. I would also invite you to write in, give us your feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at twitter.com slash insights underscore things. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We do stream uh, five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you're an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free monthly Twitch Prime subscription. We'd appreciate your support through that. Uh, or you can get links to all that and much more on our official website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy most of the time, and Insights and the Tomorrow, our monthly podcast hosted by you and my brother Sam that's not technically monthly anymore. Nor does he always host it, so. Yes. <laughs> anyway, someone will be sitting in with me. <laughs> that's it. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.